Hello guys and welcome back to Miniature Mayhem. In today's video I'm going to be painting an Alapex from the Eidneth Deepkin. I've got mine painted in the Briomdar colour scheme. I hope you enjoy it. If you do find the video useful, please consider subscribing and dropping a like down below. Let's get straight into it. I'm going to start by giving the model an all over base coat of Vallejo Black Primer through the airbrush. For the Alapex itself, I decided to give the model a base coat of Sandry Dust. I wanted my Alapex to look a little bit like a tiger sand shark as this species fits in perfectly with my colour scheme. The Alapex's body is really smooth, so make sure you use nice thin down paints so that you can't see any visible brush strokes. Using a mix of XV88 and Lamian Medium, I'm going to start building up some of the shadows around the harnesses and in the folds of the flesh. I'm using a mix here of about four parts Lamian Medium to one part XV88. Don't forget to put some in the scars as well. With this now dry, you start to see some nice subtle shading. Using Lamian Medium instead of water helps smooth the transition. We're now going to repeat the process again, this time using Mournfang Brown. Again, mix it with Lamian Medium and just work it into the deepest recesses. Going back to XV88, this time without Lamian Medium, I'm going to start adding some colour to the tips of the fins. The goal here is to get darker as we go towards the tips. Once that's dry, go back over the same areas with Mornfang Brown, leaving some of the XV88 showing underneath. Don't forget to shade those pectoral fins as well. Doing these few shades with some Lamian Medium, I think we've built up some really nice colour and some easy shadows that anyone can do. Along the ridges of the fins, I'm adding some Dryad Bark. For the gums of the Alapex, I'm going to use Squid Pink. Take your time not to get any of this onto the skin. Add a small amount of water to the paint and apply this into the scars. Apply a careful wash of Caribou Crimson. Try and get the paint to settle where the gum line meets the skin. I also applied this down the centre of the scars as if that area was a little bit deeper. I'm not entirely sure what happened to the focus here but I'm just applying a highlight of squid pink to the raised areas. To base coat the teeth and also highlight the skin, I'm using Screaming Skull. I've just applied a small amount of water to this so we can get the paint to flow nicely. Take your time, work your way all the way around the model, try and use the edge of a really fine brush if you can and just catch up all the raised areas. Don't forget to add a highlight to the lower part of each scar as well. I've showed my basing for the Eidneth in a few other videos so let's just pretend I did it. For the leather strapping all round the Alapex and also the undergarments on the riders, I'm going to apply a base coat of Dryad Bark. Take your time on the areas closest to the skin as we don't want to have to go back and fix anything on there. For the armour, I'm using a base coat of Wah Flesh. I really feel like at this stage things start to look like they're coming together. I like to paint my deepkin with a nice grey skin tone, so I use Mechanica's standard grey to base coat them. I warm this back up later with some purple, don't worry. I really wanted my deepkin to have no metallics, so all of my weapons are painted with Xandri dust and worked up as if they're made from bone. The last base coat we need to apply is Jacaro Orange. I'm not a huge fan of this colour when it goes down, but you can really make it pop with a wash. I'm 
First we're going to wash the orange sections with Fuegan Orange. Then wash all the weapons with Seraphim Sepia. This paint's been mixed with Lamy and Medium because I don't really want it that dark. And try and get it to settle on the lower areas because we're going to add highlights of bone later. To all of the leather areas we're going to add a wash of Agrax Earthshade. For the skin tones use a mix of Lamy and Medium and Xerus Purple. Try and get this to settle in just the recesses and we're going to highlight it back up with some grey in a minute. The last wash we need to apply is Coelia Green Shade. You have to take your time here and try and get it to pull into each of the crenellations as this will add a lot of depth to the colour. The first highlight we're going to apply is which flesh added to the base coat of dried bark. For this entire army's colour scheme I have added witch flesh as the highlight colour for everything as this helps to create a really nice uniform colour scheme. For the skin tone we're going to reapply Mechanica Standard Grey, this time just try and leave the purple in the recessed areas. Add a small amount of witch flesh into the mix and just pick out the raised areas. For the orange, reapply the original base coat colour as the first highlight. For the fins, just highlight the centre of each cell and try and leave some of the deeper orange in the recesses. For the hair, use the side of the brush and just pick out some of the more prominent fibres. Add some witch flesh to the orange and just pick out the most prominent areas of the hair. For the weapons, reapply a base coat of Zandri Dust and pick out all of the raised areas and sharp edges. Use a light dry brush of Screaming Skull to pick out the most raised areas. The final highlight for this model is Warpstone Glow. Apply this along every ridge line of all the green armour. Once the first layer is dry, add a second layer to the highest points to add some nice depth to the colour. With that complete, all the highlights are now done and the model is finished. I'm just going to apply some nice tufts to the base, in this case the Gamer Grass Alien Turquoise, and the model's now finished. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing and dropping a like down below. Leave me a comment for what you'd like to see me paint next.